take a look at this, guys. This is the Asus ROG phone. Such power, such elegance. It's probably one of your ultimate gaming phones. I bought this phone about six months ago, and for the past six months, it's provided me one of the most flawless gaming experiences I've ever had on any device, any computer, period. It's awesome. It's provided me the smoothest gameplay. It's absolutely seamless. And really the only big downside to the Asus ROG phone is its price. In fact, yes, I'd say that's a major downside. Because when I bought this phone, it was $1,400. That's a lot of money. And even still, six months after it was released, it's still almost $1,000. Now I can bet most of the people watching this video right now can't afford a phone that's $1,000, especially not one that's $1,400. And if you're watching this video and you play video games on the regular, games like Fortnite, games like PUBG, games like Pixel Gun, games that are very intensive and require a lot of phone capability, you're going to need something like the Asus ROG phone to have a good gaming experience. So. What if you could get the Asus ROG phone for one-third or even one-fourth of the price? It seems impossible, right? Well, it's not. Welcome to the Nubia Red Magic Mars. I was fortunate enough to get this a few days ago. In the background, you are seeing video footage from a couple of days ago when I first unboxed this device. And it's basically everything you could possibly want in the Asus ROG phone but for $399 at its base price. This phone is very well made and it feels a lot higher quality than something like the cheap plastic Poco phone. That thing's gonna break after a year. This one's not. This one is going to provide you with multiple years of a very good gaming experience. And from what I've seen so far, it's one of the best phones out there for literally one third to one fourth of the price of the Asus ROG phone. That's good. That's really good. Most people can afford something if they're wanting a good gaming experience for $300. Now, this device can go from 6 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage space, all the way up to what I have, 10 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage space. It has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 and it runs Android 9.0. This is a true gaming phone. If you look on the back, I mean, my God, this is really showing it off. It's got that RGB back. I mean, who doesn't love that? The Asus ROG phone has the RGB back where it lights up different colors. And this one has it the same way. If you were to go into the phone settings, it actually is customizable, which I think is very cool. I mean, how many phones have an RGB back? Yeah, maybe some phones can have a customizable case that does that capability, but built into the phone itself, and when you're having that on, it's actually going to contribute to game performance. Very few phones have that. So talking about the other two models, there is the 6 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes storage model, which is the color red, which they call the essential model. And then there's the superior model, which is 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of internal storage, and that is a black color. So if you're looking for a more sleek design, maybe something like red or black is a little bit more of the way to go, but I've got that really cool looking camo back, and I don't know, I mean, gamers are flashy for the most part, so something like this that really stands out is what I was wanting in a phone. So to start, if we were to actually talk about all the different things that this phone has. now. When you first get the device, of course, in that box, it's a very nice unboxing experience. You can take the phone out of that little plastic wrapping and then you have to go through the whole setup process. Underneath you have some other papers that come with your device and then it's going to come with what they call the NeoPower 3.0 Quick Charge. Now, I unfortunately got one for Asian connections. I did not get one for the US connections. However, when you are ordering through their official website, obviously you just choose which country you are delivering that to, and then you're going to get the proper one. Since mine was a test one, I think all the test ones automatically are with the Asian connection, but for you buying one personally, you're going to get your own personal connection. 
This phone comes with a 3800 milliamp hour battery, and that's by no means bad at all. That is very comparable, if not better, than most other phones in the market today. So you're going to be able to game intensively for a long period of time before you have to charge. And actually, in a couple of days, if you subscribe to my channel, I will be posting a full review of the game PUBG Mobile with the Nubia Red Magic Mars. Now, I actually have a very cool offer for you guys. I am going to get a discount code, which I will link down below in the description. If you guys would like to get 5% off of the Nubia Red Magic Mars, then you might want to check it out down below in the description. I'll talk about it more later on, but I thought I'd mention it now before you guys rush off and start looking at their website and then buying it before you have a chance to use a discount code. It's a great buy, seriously. And we're not even done with this review yet because there are a lot of other very unique features with this phone that we have to talk about. So first off, exterior wise, this thing is made out of metal. It's a very solid phone. It's a little bit heavy, but the thing is, you don't really need to worry about weight because if you're gaming and you're holding your mobile device, you're not going to be walking around trying to hold this phone out straight and using it as like a weight or something like that, right? You're going to have your hands resting on the table. It's just going to, the weight doesn't matter. So a lot of people complain that a phone is either too light or too heavy. It doesn't matter. It's as long as the phone feels right, and this one does. Since it's also made out of that metal backing, it's not super slippery, and that's fantastic. Like, I can almost hold the phone attached to the side of my hand directly vertical, maybe at like a 10-degree angle, and it still will not fall. With other phones, that's a huge problem, being super, super slippery. This one's not the case at all. Next up, it has a full 6-inch display in 1080p resolution. It's an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, which is great for YouTube. That's the default aspect ratio for YouTube videos, so you don't have to worry about putting a blurred background when you're editing or anything like that, like you have to do with something like the Asus ROG phone. Talking about the buttons, if you were to press the buttons on this device, they feel very crisp. You can hear the clickiness of the button. And I know this is pretty small and not really a deal breaker to any logical person, but I mean, hey, that's always a great thing to have with a phone. If you press the buttons and you can actually feel the feedback of clicking it without actually having to look at the screen, you can know when you turned on the phone. And I think that's just a nice touch to this phone. This phone has a fingerprint scanner on the back and it's a very conveniently placed fingerprint scanner, I think. I mean, it can hold very comfortably in your hand, and it's a very quick fingerprint scanner as well. It's going to almost instantaneously register your finger, and I mean, that's always great to have. There are some phones out there still that take a couple of seconds to register your finger, and that's never good. You want to have a fast fingerprint scanner? This one does the job very well. Now, talking about other buttons, maybe something that you don't actually see on the phone itself, but something that this phone has that the Asus ROG phone has as well is custom mapped shoulder buttons. You can basically press the sides of your device and you can customize where that input will be on your screen. So you don't have to use your pointer fingers or your thumbs anymore to press the firing button and the aiming button on video games. You can now just press the shoulders of your device and have that register as those buttons. So you can have your hand away from the screen more, you can see enemies better, and it gives you a huge advantage because it's more accurate compared to other players playing the more standard way. Now, if you're looking for a gaming phone, this is probably the way to go. I have a lot of different gaming phones, I have a lot of different regular phones. I have an iPhone XS Max. I have an Asus ROG phone. I have the original Razer, Razer phone. Now, all of these are top of the line devices. All of these, when they were at least originally released, they were $800 or more. And all of these phones overheat, but this one doesn't do that. Despite the Asus ROG phone actually having a fan that comes with the device that you can connect up to it to cool down the device, it's still very hot and my hands sweat when I use it. That's the same with the iPhone, that's the same with the Razer phone. And if you're playing for long periods of time on very, very competitive games like PUBG Mobile and Fortnite Mobile, basically any other Battle Royale games, your hands are going to sweat and then it's going to become less accurate. You might end up accidentally pressing something on your screen that you don't want to. Now, I sweat, I don't know if every single person watching this video sweats when they're playing video games, but I'm sure a fair amount of people do. So if you're wanting a phone that's not going to cause that, this phone is the way to go. 
because it actually has three different ways of cooling, as opposed to the iPhone having none, and then the Razer phone not really having any, and the Asus ROG phone having a external fan that you can put on. First off, this phone is built out of metal, which as they claim, the company claims, it's going to dissipate heat 64% more effectively than plastic or glass. Secondly, there is a special copper piping that's built inside of this phone that's going to dissipate heat away from the CPU and GPU and then bring it to the external far parts of the phone. So it's going to make it a lot more evenly dissipated. And then lastly, the most unusual and actually coolest thing about this with the passive airflow is what they call it. There's actually four different vents on the back of this phone, which you guys can see right here. As opposed to the Asus ROG phone having two different vents, this one has four, and that's going to have all of that heat escaping from all four sides of your device. So four times the amount of heat escaping your device as these other, de other devices. And I mean, from the picture that I'm showing right here, you can see how much better the Nubia Red Magic Mars can dissipate heat compared to the Asus ROG phone or, or what they call the iPhone XS. I don't think they tested the XS Max, but it's going to be very similar. Now to talk about why this is a very convenient gaming phone, if we were to look on the side of the phone right here, there is a special dedicated gaming button where if you slide that up, it's going to put your phone in gaming mode. Now, the Asus ROG phone has something very similar to this where you can squeeze the sides of your phone and then it puts it into the gaming mode and that basically just takes away all of the phone processes from background activity focused on the game that you're playing. So it's going to put all of the effort of that phone towards the game that you're playing, and this one does it in a very unique way. When you first slide up the button, of course it's going to give you that very cool looking animation, and then you're presented with this screen right here. This is the Red Magic screen. It's basically going to be your homepage for all of your different video games. I don't have too many on right now, but you can click any of these different video games and then it's going to put each of these games in their own designated mode. However, you don't want to do that yet because there are four buttons on the bottom that you can choose between. First off, on the bottom left, you can see mine says Skyline. That's just basically your different types of RGB backings you can put on your phone. So. There's different names for different ways the colors react in the back and I guess you can turn that on when you're playing and that's going to just improve the performance or maybe just be for looks, I don't really know. It's cool to have it on, it's not really going to take up that much more battery power and it's going to make you game in style. Next up, high performance. If you check that on, it's going to, again, even more focus all of the processes entirely on the game. So you're going to have a much better feedback when you're playing the game. It's going to be a lot smoother than you would without this special gaming mode. 4D vi vibration, I guess you can turn that on. I've never been a fan of that. I've tried it out for the past couple of days and it basically just gives you vibrations, other things that you can customize based off of the different scenario that you're in in your game. You can make it a little bit more realistic, I guess but not too realistic. So I mean, hey, if you get shot, you can have a certain type of vibration. If you're shooting, you can get another type of vibration. I don't know. It's just a cool thing to have. You might like it. You might not. I don't recommend putting it on, but you can try it out. And then lastly, shield notification. Of course, you don't want to have notifications when you're playing a video game. You don't want to be sitting there, last three players remaining in PUBG with 22 kills, AWM and the micro Uzi trying to get a perfect YouTube video and then having a phone call in the middle of the video screwing you up and then you die from the zone. With shielding notifications, no notifications will appear and you're going to be able to basically have do not disturb but way better with this device. Now we've talked a lot about the upsides to this phone and there are some downsides, very minor downsides, but you know, for a phone that's $399, they obviously have to cut some things small in order to keep it down to this very affordable price. First off, this is not a downside at all. This is actually an upside. This phone has a headphone jack. It's on the top of the phone as well, which I've always liked better personally. It's just less in the way than having the headphone jack on the bottom. So, I mean, for a phone that's $399, you can get a headphone jack. The Asus ROG phone, of course, has it as well, but you don't have to spend $1,000 to get a headphone jack. This one has it, and it's one third of the price. Next up, when you rest your phone down on a table, it's built in a way that it's going to wobble a lot. Now, I don't care about this at all personally. I know there might be a few people out there that do. 
I know a lot of YouTubers say that this is like a major deal breaker, but I personally don't care. If I'm resting it down on a table, I'm resting it down on a table. I'm not going to be fooling around with it, touching the thing. So honestly, I can't really say that's a downside to this phone at all. But I have to mention it in case, for whatever reason, that's a downside to you. And then really the only big downside to this is its camera. That's honestly the only thing. However, here's the thing. If you're watching this video, you're going to get a phone like this specifically for gaming. You're not getting this phone for the camera. If you're wanting a phone for the camera, you're going to get the Google Pixel, you're going to get the Samsung Galaxy, you're going to get the iPhone. You're not going to get a phone like this. So the rear camera is perfectly respectable. It's a 16 megapixel single camera. I honestly think it looks really cool. That hexagonal shape is certainly something that I think is a unique design compared to other phones. It's different, so I guess, hey, why not have something different if you're, you know, trying to stand out in the crowd? Next up, it can record 4K resolution at 30 FPS, not at 60 FPS, but 30 FPS. So, I mean, hey, it's fine. You can get some pretty decent videos out of this. It's not super stabilized, but it's certainly manageable. You're obviously not going to want to take this thing, like, to the skate park or skiing or something like that because it's going to be super wobbly and just not provide you with that same level of camera quality that something like the iPhone has. And then for the front camera, it is going to be able to record 1080p resolution at 30 FPS. So if you were to maybe do a Skype call or something like that, it's going to work perfectly fine. It's just not going to be at the same quality as something like the Google Pixel, Samsung Galaxy, iPhone, stuff like that. Not a major deal breaker because, again, you're looking at this phone for its gaming capabilities, but it's something to note if, for whatever reason, you want a phone that's a fantastic gaming phone and also a fantastic camera phone. However, if you're really gonna get anything better than this in terms of the camera, price is going to skyrocket. So they really did all they could, and I think they did well. Last few things to note, it's got a dual SIM tray, which is always great. It's got USB Type-C, that's pretty expected for phones nowadays. Even the new iPhone is rumored to have that, so I mean, basically everything out there is going to have that same standard USB-C type of connection. This phone has great surround sound as well, which is super important in competitive gaming. In fact, I would go as far to say that the sound is almost good enough to where you could do a lot of matches in games like PUBG without even using headphones. Now, of course, use headphones because people around you aren't going to want to hear the sounds of gunshots, but you technically could play and do well without any headphones on. It's DTS 7.1 surround sound so you can actually kind of get from just the speaker of the device where enemies are in relation to their footsteps in the direction of the game that you are actually playing so i thought that's pretty cool and then lastly on the actual phone itself it's a very standard android experience um what they call not a lot of bloatware I'm not too familiar with that, but honestly, from the experience that I've had, it's very easy to navigate around. It's very smooth in anything, basically, that you're using this phone for. I've used it with other apps, other more regular everyday apps. Every app is perfectly smooth, perfectly fine. And I mean, it's just a great overall phone with everything basically aside from the camera. The display is bright, not as bright as something like your iPhone, but certainly very bright, so you can use this outside perfectly fine. It's a very loud speaker, and lastly, it runs the Adreno 630 GPU. Don't really know what that does, but hey, it sounds pretty good. That's probably a reason why this phone works so well. So, yes, this is a fantastic phone. Do I recommend getting it? Yes. If I were to rate this phone in terms of gaming from 1 to 10, yes, this is a full 10. But if I were to rate this as an overall phone, I'd give this an 8.5. The camera really kind of diminishes that score quite a lot. And then the sole fact that the display is a pretty decent display, but not the absolute best display in the world, will put it down maybe another 0.5 points to make it an 8.5. However, again, as I said before, you're not looking at this as a regular everyday phone. There are better phones out there to be your regular everyday phone. But for a gaming phone, for people that want to do YouTube videos and want to have a dedicated, powerful phone for that, this is your ultimate phone. For the games that I play on my channel, Fortnite Mobile, 
PUBG Mobile and Pixel Gun 3D, this is a fantastic phone. I've had no hiccups in any of the games and it's great. I would highly recommend it. So again, if you've watched this far, down below in the description, I have provided more information on how you can get this phone. There is a 5% off discount if you use my code. So be sure to go check it out. I believe that code actually works for anything site-wide. So if you wanted to get this phone from Nubia or anything else, any of the other Nubia devices, then you can do that using my code linked down below in the description. Seriously, get this thing because compared to something like the Poco phone, this is better. So yeah, with that being said, that's basically it. Thank you all for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all learned something new in today's video. Make sure to get yourself a Nubia Red Magic Mars if you're wanting a very good gaming phone, and I'll see you all later.